Hi guys, well welcome back to Allotment Diggers. It's the 13th of November today, 2022. Just come back from um, Bolton um, Antiques Fair. Bought some beautiful coins. They're here. And they're here. Some very rare coins in here. So tiny. You won't be, I won't be able to um, give them justice on this camera. So later on at the end of the video, I'll give you a closer look at these about 500 quid there absolutely stupid money but well worth it um, there's a couple of coins that I've been after for a while and I managed to get hold of them uh, a lad who I buy my coins off there he managed to acquire them for me so at a real reasonable price so what we've been doing this week well Buttercup's not here at the moment the little traitors over there with Rick in um, sunbathing it's gorgeous today as well the sun's out I should really be out there doing a bit of weeding but no, um, just just fed Buttercup, she's took, done one. So I've decided to get this video up now while I can, while I've, I've got five minutes from everyone else. So I've been running around the allotments this week, as you will see in the episode. Um, but the, the first video I'm gonna show is me um, removing all my um, chilies and my peppers from the, the front greenhouse. That's removing all the plants uh, and the last of the um, chilies and peppers, you're gonna see what we've, what we've got but we've been in there taking them for the last two months so um, this is just the last of the peppers and chilies so let me show you me um, clearing the front greenhouse preparing it for um, the strawberries as you can see there's simply no room in there to um, swing a cat round so what I'm doing today is putting me, um, these gloves on I'm just just plastic and um, what we're gonna do we're gonna pull all the chilies out I've got a tray there all the plants are going in the buckets and um, we see what we got at the end of it so I've got to climb in there now past this camera and uh, I've at it well guys I'm in the process of taking the last of the chilies out here. I can tell you it's hard work. All the, the canes I'm taking out, all the bottles are going into here. All the plants are going into here. It's, I've hardly got a, any room at all to swing, a, you can't swing a cat round in here. I know I haven't tried it with Buttercup, she's outside somewhere. good roots on these as well, that's why they've grown so well. The banging you can hear there is my mate, he's building a um, pad in his shed, putting a new skin on his shed, that's the banging you can hear. So if you are curious, end up doing is taking this this stuff out half of it out and putting it into my beds and the rest of them will top dress it with um, more new um, compost uh, before we grow anything in it but like I say it's taking me slowly having to go through it oh, big spider there look at that I think over there sunshine Yeah, we don't kill spiders. They eat all the creepy crawlers in your greenhouse. Yeah, anyway, I'm not going to bore you to death, but... Joe Long. Some have ripened, some are not. I mean, they're the Joe Long. Quite a lot of them here. It's been a good year for uh, the chilies. This is the last of them. I mean, I've been coming in here periodically taking peppers like that out. That's the last of the peppers, I think. I don't think there's any more in there. 
but we'll see as we go along. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you to death. I'll come back when it's all finished. Like I said there's not enough room to swing a cat round in here. But further down this end I get, the better it should be. Fantastic bell pepper. Oh my god, there's tons of them in here. <laughs> right, anyway, let's crack on. I'll see you in a bit. Sterilise always. Can do that later. I just want to tidy up in here for now. Right, let's go and get me a bag and we'll get rid of all this. Well, guys, as you can see, we've uh, took all the chilies and the peppers out of here now. Uh, I've got them all in that bag there. Um, but. Um, what I'm going to be doing, I've got obviously coming here with my jet wash and I'm going to clean all the, the glass, all the, the panels. Um, them two plants that you see there are actually damsons. Um, there was a couple of saplings that I took from underneath the um, damson tree. I thought, why not? And maybe we'll get a damson tree on here eventually. But uh, yeah, there's two of them there. Anyway, I've still got a bit more tidying up still to do in here but um the main thing is all the chilies are out so let's have a look at these chilies that we've um we've harvested these are the last of the chilies by the way so guys these are me chilies and peppers these are the last of them these things are i've got bucket hands these are big these are really really big uh these are called ox oxhorn and these are bell peppers, these are Joe Long and uh, well the jalapenos, we've had, we took all the jalapenos but these are the last of them but yeah this is the last harvest of the, the chilies and the peppers which is uh, absolutely awesome I'm going to bag these up and uh, get them home and I can guarantee you these are going to be in some sort of stir fry tonight with the girls, they, they absolutely love them so yeah, some wonderful chilies and peppers there. The chilies, the peppers have all been chopped up. Um, the pepper, the chilies that they've, um, I forget the name, but what you call it, where you dry them out and then you, you could, actually she's making chili powder um, with them. That's what she does. She dries them out and makes chili powder. However, some of them she did uh, do some beef burgers and put a bit of chili in there the other night. It was really nice. And mix some peppers in as well. So yeah, that was the that was the last harvest of the uh, the chilies and peppers this year from that front greenhouse. It's produced a lot of fruit, uh, veg, uh, um, peppers and chilies out of there over the last couple of months, as I was saying. Um, we've also been um, top dressing the rhubarb at the back of the plot. It needed redoing. It needed more putting on. And um, what we're going to try and do is force the rhubarb so we get it around about. February so let me show you me um, putting this horse manure over the top of me um, me rhubarb and then we'll be right back rainbow there eh? clear skies over there eh? I'm not kidding you guys it's just it's just stop, it's just been raining on me it's stopped now it's stopped raining now but not 10 seconds ago there's actually rain coming down. Absolute crazy weather. 
There's Buttercup sat on my car. I just gone up to uh, check on the horse when your situation. Look at them. <laughs> hey, she's faster than a greyhound, isn't she? Hey, babes. Hey, don't know why you run all the way up here. We're going back now. Hey. What's she like? <laughs> See, she can move when she wants to. Using my bloody car as a launch pad. Yeah, it's uh, quite breezy today as well. I've just been checking on the horse when your bays there. Uh, the front bay's almost empty. And that one up there's half empty. I've just, uh, like I say, sent a message up to my mate Bob. And hopefully, in the week, he'll drop us a couple of loads off. Uh, we go through quite a lot of it this time of year. I need to get my leaf blower out and start blowing some of these leaves away. Or put bagging them up anyway. This is another job I need to. Oh, you can't really see. The sun's so bright. This needs a lick of paint. <laughs> I'm contemplating working on this bed here. However, there's another bed at the back uh, with me, me rhubarb. But I need to put more rhubarb, uh, more, more uh, horse manure on, so I think I might do some of that today. But look at that, that cloud there, that's what's just been raining on me. Wow, look at that for a dark cloud. I'm expecting a funnel to come out of it and touch down a tornado. Absolute awesome. You can see blue sky all the way around it, but look how dark that one is there. At least it's heading towards the continent. It's heading east. Keep going. <laughs> that one's as, as dark as well. But yeah, just look how dark that cloud is. Wow. Blue sky on the way. Be able to... Well, I want to do that bed there, but I think what I might do is just top dress the... Um, the rhubarb down the back of the plot. All these leaves need um, scooping up as well. Um, that's another job I need to do. There me girls. The garlic's pushing up there, so we're gonna have to push that down. The reason why that pushes up is because of the roots. It's there, uh, the soil's so soft, it can't get any traction. So what it does, it, the roots push the, the bulbs up. But um, yeah, we can sort that out. I don't see anything happening here in the only, uh, with the, the elephant garlic oh i can i can see one two just starting to come up now don't know if you can see them there there's one and there's another one up that end so yep there that one right there so they're just starting now. Some lovely uh, cabbages in there as well. They're doing well. How many have we got in there? 12. Right, anyway, what I want to do is. What are you doing? Just come down here. And pile a load of um, horse manure all the way along the back of these on these rhubarb on this rhubarb here, right up over, up to the top of the crowns. That's what I want to do. Want to completely cover them. And um, I think that would be that be the job for the next day or two anyway. Right, anyway, I'll show you this when we're done. I'm not going to show you, but bore you to death. But um, I'm just going to throw the horse manure over the top of these leaves as well. Just let them all rot down. This tree's pumping them out. All these leaves are all everywhere. I have to collect all these up shortly. 
they will be used though in my compost bins well today we're going to be grabbing some of this stuff piling it in there and going to be top dressing the rhubarb down the back of the uh the plot where the fence is and i'm going to put a real big thick layer on and uh hopefully we'll get a decent crop of uh rhubarb come march maybe a bit sooner so this is what we're doing so i'm grabbing some of that i'll show you what we're doing down the bottom in a bit well that's the first battery of horsemen you're probably going to need about five of them i've got plenty of horsemen you're there though anyway let's go and get some of this spread on my rhubarb well that's the first barrel load um probably be about four or five barrels and we'll be putting on here all the way along so watch this space so this is the second i put the second batter in here um probably another two and a half batters i'm gonna have to put along here but um yeah what we're doing but basically covering the crowns now just covering them and uh, we're going to force the the rhubarb there's already some rhubarb up there uh, i just be a bit careful with that but yeah what we're doing um i'll probably put another inch or two along here but we've got to do that what, what other half up there first so we'll be back with the third barrel and the fourth barrel and hopefully we'll have it all done in the next hour or two well i think one more batter should be enough just down halfway there then we've got a nice thick layer of uh, horseman you're all the way along the back of the fence here where the rhubarb is so yeah that's the just that bit there just there we need to do cover that and then my jobs are good and right i'll go and get my last batter of uh of Arsmanure. Well guys that's the last uh, wheel barrow of Arsmanure that I need and as you can see I've tidied up here keep the, keep the bay nice and clean however when I go from here this is just going to get thrown all over the floor right? it'd be like a pigsty um, no no respects at all for others but uh, yeah I've like I said I've cleared all this here and then you can get a, another load in there probably tomorrow that's the intentions anyway right anyway i've got what i need let's go and get this final wheel that i spread on my rhubarb well thankfully that's it all the horsemen yours been topped topped up over well put over the top of the uh, rhubarb all the way along the back here um so that's my rhubarb put to bed for the winter as well along the back fence this will come good around about January, February. It's just starting to come up there now, so there is a clump up there. But right away along the back of this fence here, uh, this rhubarb has now been put to bed for the winter. There's only one more job to do. You guessed it. I've got to go and wash my wheelbarrow. So once that's done, the job's done. Well face you i'm soaking i just cleaned my wheel batter after um putting that horseman yaw along uh, the back of my fence where my rhubarb is and this has happened i'm not kidding you this cloud's followed me around all morning see it's clear all the way around all the way around all the way around here right above me this bloody storm cloud, I bet it's her singing. Shut your face, you. You have it raining. Oh, God, I'm out of breath. I just have to walk very fast. <laughs> just dump that there <laughs> and then come flying in the greenhouse. But yeah, I'm wet again. That means I'm going to have a, another bloody cold. But uh, here yeah, we've, uh, we've done the, the rhubarb. This will be the next bed. Won't be today though, that's for sure. Um, I'm absolutely soaked, so I think uh, I'll put my wheelbarrow away in a second. Like I said, I've just washed it and my, my shovel. 
and uh, knock it on the head for today. Top her food up here, and we'll do a sneak off and run away. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm running away. It's stopped raining now. Unbelievable. There's Maggie over there. Near that um, polygonal um, greenhouse. Right. Yep, stop raining. Like I say, bloody showers. So as you can see, wash my tools, keep them clean and they'll last forever. Right, I'm going to put these away and then I'm going to head off. So as you can see, we top dressed all the way along. You can see from the other side now, all the rhubarbs all been covered. I just left the crown just sticking, protruding. There is a, a few rhubarb come up there, but yeah, this is covered now. In a few months time, you start seeing the rhubarb coming up again. But um, right now, got a good layer of horse manure on top of it to protect it through the winter months. So we, we got that done and then I decided then to um, to put on my, um, my rosemary. I only need about 15, so I had 15 pots on, a, on the table out here and um, already prepared. All I needed to do was basically to drop the, um, the rosemary into them and that was it, they were done. So I'm going to show you this rosemary that we've, we're going to be potting on now and then um, I'll show you where we put them at the Hi end. Hi guys, well today um, I've got all these trays as a... There's about 15 of them and what I've got, I've got this rosemary uh, This is what I grew, uh, we took some cuttings and this is what we've got So all I'm doing today is taking the sandsil pot out, pot out And then if you just see the roots are just starting to come now We're just going to pop them in And this is what we're doing um, I'm going to do 15, the rest I've got another 30 or so, but we're going to be giving them away. But these ones, it's just a matter of popping them out. Some nice little roots there, you can just see the roots. And uh, it's just a matter of dropping them in the hole. Yeah, we've had these sat out here for a, a quite a bit now. And... Uh, I thought it was about time I actually potted my rosemary on. So what we'll do, we're going to put these in the greenhouse as well. In the in the back greenhouse. So I'm going to put them on the table for now. And then next year, early next year, we're going to plant these out into the um, into, onto the plot itself. That one's still got soil in it. So what we'll do is we're going to leave them in these drip trays and I can put water in and we'll water them from the bottom. But um, these don't need water because they've been outside and they've, the rain's been going into these um, into these drip trays and obviously the, the soil's damp so these are perfect. Um, next year, I say we're going to be putting them into the beds and then we'll start all over again with the rosemary bushes because the ones what we've got are a bit old now and uh, they need replacing but yeah this, these have all been done from cutting so I've got another 10 to do and uh, I'll put them in the greenhouse out of the way so Here, that one's oh good god the rabbit and as you see we're going to repeat the process we'll do we'll have a tidy up after we're done as well go on i do another i do this this lot here and then i'll show you where we're putting them what i do is i snip the top off as well and then they grow into a bush but we can do that when they're a bit more established in these pots
Let's see that next one. There we go. In you go. You don't need any support at the moment. Um, like I said, they're going in the greenhouse. And hopefully, like I, I did an experiment, I cut the top off this here, and what happened is it's bushed them out, so that's what we're after. We'll turn them into bushes before we, uh, we put them outside anyway. Right, anyway, I'll get these into the back greenhouse and then we'll, we'll carry on. I'll show you what they look, where we put them. Well, this is where we've um, put the, the rosemary. There's 15 of them, 15 bushes, potential bushes. I've left them in the back greenhouse. Uh, we do need to come in and um, clear it. Um, got some bubble wrap here. A mate of mine just give me all this bubble wrap. A uh, big roll of it. I need to get this um, this kale out as well. I don't know where I'm going to put it. And I've got a few onions, spare and garlic there to give a few friends if anyone wants any. Some white and red onions there, winter onions. These need to go out as well. These are collies, they're not very good. I might even throw these ones away. There's only four of them. But if I can find a place for them, I will do. But yeah, I just thought I'd take you and show you this here. This is where I've put my me, um, me rosemary. So yeah, we've got 15 potted on. I will be putting them around on the corners of um, the front of the, these pl the, the beds on the front of the plot. I like to have them on the corners. When you walk past them and brush past them, you get a, that wonderful smell of rosemary. And that's the reason why I like to to put them on the corners. Uh, we have got another 20 or so, and anyone on the allotment wants uh, one or two of them, come and see me. I've got quite a lot of them, as you saw there. Um, I was actually in Wilco's the other day, and um, I acquired um, some spring bulbs. They're going at half price at the moment, but I reckon next week you'll be able to pick them up 15 pence a pack at the moment. They're half price. So they cost a little bit more, but if you if you don't get what you want now, you might uh, miss out um, next week. So I decided to get the ones that I really wanted, and if the the prices come down next week, I'll buy even more of them. But um, yeah, these are the selection that I bought. Well, guys, as you can see here, we've got uh, some some bulbs, some bulbs. Um, Twenty five quid worth of bulbs in. I paid twelve pound fifty for them half price. Um, got these narcissus a uh, mixed double um, variety of uh, narcissus daffodils and then we got um, these tulips here they're a purple white mix um, these were four pound a bag I got them for two pounds so I got two bags of there those four quid these was two pound fifty then I got these selection and um, one pound fifty uh, twenty five each and uh, there's seven and a half quid there. They should have cost me 15 quid. Uh, we've got these double light uh, finola. I do like these. I also like these uh, double light uh, sun lover. Um, they're beautiful. These uh, trumpet tom pronounce uh, pounce. They're, these are awesome. I like the, the yellow at the bottom. Beautiful tulip. And then we've got these um, single early white prints. I do like these white tulips, just plain white. And uh, then we got these um, Rembrandt mix. Uh, all these are uh, plant between September and December, and we we, we finish off the, the the tulips with this double eight uh, blue spe spectacle. Now they don't look blue to me; they look purple. I don't know what it looks to you, but they look purple to me. And it says the blue, but anyway. So we bought all these. And like I say, I paid 12 and a half quid for a lot. Saving myself 12 and a half quid. They're optional. But these are what we're going to be planting in this bed just uh, over here. We're going to cover them in these tulips all around here. Now we've already got a load of daffodils in here, but we're going to put them around here in this bed um, there's already a pile of daffodils in here um, all these you can see calendula coming up it's not weeds it's calendula it's so mild and um, well you can see me my pansies and um, my violas here in these plants it we've even got um, fuchsias growing 
<laughs> doing really well out here. Uh, we're in, I think it's uh, about, is it the, what's the date? I can't say, my, I'm using my phone. I think it's about the, the 40, 13th, 14th today. Maybe no, it's, well, it's Sunday anyway, so whatever that date is from the last episode. Um, remember when we went in hard with the with the saw, the axe blade, the the, the um, rip saw, and we dug in to cut all the, the tops off all the um, all the yellow flagars. What do you think they are? They're coming up. Yep, yellow flagars, and they look awesome. In amongst there, there's a load of tulips and daffodils and crocuses and stuff like that, so they'll be coming up. Just need a lick of paint. I've got to be careful when I'm doing that because of bugger lugs over there in the greenhouse. But yeah, all them bulbs are probably going into this bed here. So watch this space. So we paid 12 and a half quid. We, sitting, we saved 12 and a half quid. It was half price, so I thought they was really reasonable. Anyway, what I want to do now is show you what we've done with um in here um we've we've got buttercup's new house in here now and we've moved all the um strawberries into the front greenhouse and basically we've been tidying up in here there's a few other clips mixed in here where we was working where we was over the other side of the allotment so i was doing a bit of weeding on the um the well-being plots there's still a bit of work left over there to do. I'll explain when we get over. And we're actually looking inside the community room as well. Um, there's, uh, there's a few jobs that we still need to do in, in there and in the shop, as you will hear in the, the video. So let me show you what we've been doing. Little butter cups munching on the tea there. Clean water. And tomorrow we're going to be doing um, this bed, I think, if it's not raining. Um, we've done the the horse manure of the um, the rhubarb at the back of the plot again today. So yeah, we'll tidy this bed up. And then it, basically all it is then is keeping the weeds down and picking all the leaves up until next year. Obviously, I've got other jobs to do. But uh, yeah, anyway, at least there's one person happy. And there she is munching away. I think I overdo it with the food. I don't know how much you give a cat, but I filled that one up there. And I filled that one up there. Uh, anyway, every morning when I come in, it's empty. That's the main thing. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I don't know if you can see these uh, planters. But uh, <laughs> got spring bulbs coming up in them all here. All the way along. That, by the way, is my rhubarb bed. Uh, one of my rhubarb beds anyway. Um, but yeah, they're all coming up. We've got to be careful here. I need to get in here with my rake. I need to rake this, get all these leaves out of here because this is where my snowdrops are. Of course, a few fallen apples there. Look at that lot. Unbelievable. Food bank, here we come. <laughs> well, guys, you join me. I'm down on these disabled pegs uh, plots. We haven't given them out yet. Oh, we've we've not given two out, and the the the, the planters are. I say they've got weeds in them, so I'm, I'm just down here now, just picking them out. We don't want to be giving a plot out to someone who's disabled with a with a duff, with a crappy plot. Um, just got that one to do this. Them ones over there are done, them ones there are done. That one there is Billy's, hers is lovely. Um, nice bench there for people to sit. We've got a load of furniture um, we need to put in there. Uh, but yeah, that, that was donated from John in commemoration of his wife, who just died recently, very sad. Lovely guy. And he donated that chair for us. And he's done a lot of work here for um, for the, the plots. We've actually got a... Uh, Sort the greenhouse out as well, get the glass. We've got the money to do it. All this here needs to be it with the strimmer as well, so I shall be coming in with a strimmer shortly. But at the moment, I'm just picking all these weeds out. It's, they just lift out. Now, major. 
and get the old root with them as well all the roots are coming out best time to do these is when they when it's been after just after rain and you get all the roots and everything out so that's what i'm doing at the moment but, uh, yeah i just thought i'd spend a bit of time just doing these make them look nice when Mike comes back from the Caribbean, he'll be giving these next two plots out um, to two couple of walking disabled. Um, I don't think there's anyone got the names down yet. So if any of you guys who are living in Salford are walking disabled, give us a shout. Send a message to Mike through um, through uh, Salford Council's website. You'll find us under Self Manage and um, leave your information. And um, if the, these two plots haven't been given out by the time you do that, uh, you will definitely be in, in the running for one of them. They're only small, they're like quarter plots. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, money to spend on these, so um, watch this space. Anyway, I'm going to get on with this. A bit therapeutic, doing all this, taking all the, uh, the weeds out. I do enjoy doing a bit of weeding, and I'm not bending over, which is even better. Anyway... <laughs> I'm not looking too bad, just a little bit to go, be back when we're done. So as you can see, we cleared all the planters. This is that, um, chair and uh, Carol uh, McTeer is, uh, she, was, she was only young, 61. That's absolutely shocking that, it's only a year older than me, bloody hell, makes you think, doesn't it? But yeah, it, um, John donated this for the um, the garden. Uh, we're working on it. Like I said, I've just cleared all these beds of all the weeds. That roll I'm going to be doing finishing the rest of this path. I've got to hit it with a strimmer first. But um, what we're going to do, come in, just do a, a little bit more light tidying up. That plot's been given out. That one's been given out. This one. And this one here, which is leaning at the moment, we need to sort that out, but that's nothing, that two minutes job. Um, also, we've got to put the glass in this greenhouse, because it's going to be a community greenhouse. Um, Billy, that's her plot, she's, she's got stuck in straight away, she's just buggered off to America. Uh, I think she's uh, headed to Texas or somewhere like that. Nice holiday. I'm sure she'll find uh, a wonderful place. Anyway, uh, this is her plot. The greenhouse, like I say, the, the glasses, it just needs a uh, new glass. And uh, we'll go, as soon as um, Mike's back, I'll get him to order the glass and then I'll put the glass in. Probably need about 15 panels. I'd just give 30 panels away to different people. Um, George took about 15 bloody panels for his greenhouse. Mike, he was another one. Anyway, um, all the beds are all tidied. I think we're done here for now. We will be back with a strimmer shortly. Where we are in the community room at the moment, we're doing the wiring. Um, as you can see, let's turn the lights up. There we go. Wow, they're bright. And, um, yeah, these these uh, these are got the kettle toaster. The microwave's going in there shortly. I say we've got running water. First aid kits up there. I supplied them. I, I was going to charge them. Then um, I had my window open on my car. And the bloody receipt flew out the the window. So that was that plan gone. So anyway, I donated them a couple of um, first aid kits. There's a first aid book book here um, and what have you and cleaner like I say we've got the lights we're just working we're trying to find reason why we're not got an earth um, from the um, inside the the other shed we've got this uh, AC well, DC to AC converter and um, we're not getting a, an earth in here so we're trying to figure out reason why but um, yeah um, other than that, we've got the electrics, all this all works. I think that works. No, he's not, not connected that up yet. 
Um, like I say, we're still trying to find the earth. Um, this is what um, the co-op has um, donated this year to us. Uh, two and a half, well, two and a half thousand pound nearly. That's for the well-being plots. And um, yeah, we've still got a lot of money left to 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 use on that. And these are catalogues uh, for people to take. These, I think, this is King Seeds. We're getting allotments, um, we'll get these brochures dropped off um, from time to time. This is um, where we get all this potatoes and onions. What we do, we write a list here. Some buggers pinch the pen, so I can't write the list. But uh, it's a catalogue of all the different um, potatoes and what have you are there. So we, we, we make a, a list of what we want. If we get them in, then we, we pay when, when, they, when they turn up. Um, I say the allotment council rules, uh, this should, that's the, the last uh, minutes of the last agenda. Um, insurance, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Drill is in the cupboard, Bill. <laughs> that was me, I'll have to drill for these so he could put the, um, these plugs in. Um, like I say, we've got an earth here after a fashion. We just try to figure out why they're not getting an earth. Well, because them bloody lights, when you look up there, they're very bright. But yeah, this is the community room. We've got brand new furniture to go in here as well. So when it's raining outside, anyone can come in here. It's, um, and, um, I say it's a work in progress at the moment. At least we've got the electrics working. If we were to connect them up there, we'd have the toaster and the, the kettle working in the microwave. The reason why they ain't turned on at the moment is because we're still trying to figure out why we're not getting an earth from the converter in there, in Sawyer. Because it converts um, 12 volts into 240 volts. Uh, we'll figure it out. We have got an electrician on site, so he's, he's, he's at it anyway. Right, anyway, I thought I'd show you the community room. Well, that went dark all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm just waiting now for um, for to Bob to turn up to fill up the bays. Once it, he'll be filling the bays up sometime in the next day or two. He did say he was coming down today to fill the first one. And then we got the one on the other end as well. Needs topping up as well. There's no one on here at the moment. As you can see, empty car park. Any sign of rain? Not like that. They all run away. There's a few people on. Um, we've got um, Norma and, and Norman and Nora. They're on over there. Mike's on somewhere. And a few of the lads at the other end of the allotments are on as well. But it's quite quiet. Believe today. it or not, that horseman your bay was full to the front here three days ago. Anyway, hopefully, Bob will be down later today. Refill it. Amazing how much horse when you we go through on here. We've also been using the bags of gravel that we've ordered to fill all these holes in here, all these potholes. And Mike's been throwing the gravel in there. I think we could new, need a couple more bags of this, to be quite honest with you. Um, we did all outside the gate as well. We're always under bloody water out there. But yeah, we're just just filling all the all the holes in anyway. They had all the paving stones for the path on the community plot, them well-being plots. That's, that's something I'm, I'm going to get done shortly. Well, we've got Buttercup's uh, winter home here. Got a water bottle in there, just drying everything out, making sure it's nice and dry. I'm going to move these strawberries and I'm going to stick it down here. Out the, the, the wind blows through here, so if I stick it here, at least it ain't going to... And I put the the door so it's facing out here so it, it won't be able to blow in so it could blow cold air on it i might get one of these boards and turn it up one of these um plant planters uh, and turn it upside down and um stick it on top of it um for you know to get it off the ground i think that's that's the plan anyway uh, i'm gonna use one of them on there 
Um, I'm going to be using them in a moment. Uh, this this 15 um, pots there. And what I'm going to do is be putting on my um, my rosemary. Got more apples there for the food bank, by the way. <laughs> I should be sick of them before before the the months out. But um, yeah, um, what I might do is put these into the front greenhouse. So I might do that now. I'm, I'm doing nothing at the moment. I have got this still to do. There's but a cup eating a breakfast. Well, eating a dinner actually. It's half twelve. But uh, I need to tidy this once this. I do all these here. Tidy these. Yeah, my geraniums there. Uh, um, what did I call them? Uh, I forget what they are called. I think I called them. Um, I forget what they were. Now it doesn't matter. Anyway, all my plants, planters are coming up here. These need a lick of paint as well. Uh, we've got to choose the days to do that though. We'll get a bit of a dry weather. Um, I'll get the old paintbrush out. But all these plant pots here have all got to be done as well. Anyway, what I'm going to do. And put these into the front greenhouse and uh, grab one of them trays off there and put buttercups um, home in the greenhouse she's already got a, a summer home there we're still leaving that in there and that's a perch there but she uses all these along here as perches as well she sits on this that's um polycarbonate whatever it is it's a polystyrene so the, the cold off the um the compost doesn't you know make a cold however she's got she's she likes to lie on on the the soil here to be quite honest with you it's quite warm she's got water i've filled these up to the top she's almost set that lot there look at that she's gone through all she's set the felix and left this um new one Get the name of it now. I'll show you again. I can't be my bit bending down to show you, to be quite honest with you. Laziness of me. Right, anyway, let's get these moved. Well, guys, uh, there's Buttercup's new home. Yeah, there's a water bottle in there. Like I say, I'm eating it up to um, make sure it's nice and dry. I just put one of these lids underneath this here so it's off the ground. This is where she sleeps. There she is, Lady of the Manor. And uh, there's a the door. Now we leave the door about three inches open so she can come in and out. So the wind blows through here. And uh, last year where we, we had this, and uh, where we had it, a bit stupid really, we had it in this corner. So what I've decided to do is to put it here. So it's out of the, out of the wind and she should be be fine uh, what I've done with the strawberries I've put them in here um, next to the the damson trees over there there's two of them what I'm gonna do um, this rosemary I've got some pots on the the bench there there's 15 of them so i'm going to pop 15 of them into them them big pots over there so that's i don't know how many that i've got there how many have i got here can't count them hang on i've got 11 22 22 i've got 30 so i'm only going to do 15 of them the rest of them i give to other people um but yeah, these are what we took from them cuttings. Load of uh, Velcro there. Throw, throw that in some dental and sterilise it. We're still in the process of tidying everything up in here. But um, yeah, that's my rosemary as well. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that. So there we go folks, that's what we've been doing this week. Um, I'm going to get off home now, I'm going to edit this video, I'm going to take a couple of shots of these coins, I'm going to show you these coins, what we've bought today on the um, at the Antiques Fair, so I'm going to slip this clip in here now. Well guys, these are some of the coins I've been buying today, and yeah the prices are expensive, but they're well worth it. 
especially this skate here, this Anglo-Saxon skate. <clears throat> it's a Vico type, um, eight, uh, six, six, uh, oh, 608 to 775, that's the year 775. And then we got the M of the, M of the eighth, uh, penny and a half penny. These are very rare and uh, they will make a fine addition to my collection. I've got the grow, half grow, uh, and what have you. They, as, as they go up in size, they get quite expensive, these. This one here has got the full flan on it. Then I got this Victoria 1845. This is well worth it. This is a key date. It's not in bad a nick. I've got two other coins, 1845, but this one's... For what it was, it was only 80 quid. It was well worth it, so I thought I'd grab it. It's got to be worth 100. So as long as I'm increasing my value. By the way, these things here, you can add another 50 to 60 quid on these. That's how much you could. I could sell them for if I wanted to, but they're never going to leave my collection. And then we went and bought a few of these things. Peter Rabbit, 2018. Peter Rabbit, 2018. Peter Rabbit, 2018. Peter Rabbit 2018, I pay three quid each for them. They're going for about eight quid on eBay, so I thought we got a deal there. I got this Isaac Newton again, that was two quid. And I bought these um, Pride coins, the new, new, they should get them in your change, but these are brilliant uncirculated, and I paid two quid each for them. And uh, yeah, we got this here uh, change checker card. And uh, we, we pay, this is uh, Miss Ticklemouse, and I paid, uh, I think it was two quid for them. So, yeah, we did all right. We got got quite a few coins there today to add to my collection, my hoard of coins. And we've still got the, the silver proofs to show you yet. But uh, these, I think that's my favourite coin of the day, that one. That is beautiful. God, I've got two more coming like that shortly. In the post, I hope they get here. So what you're looking at here? Now the lights come on now in this camera. It's just typical. Um, what I've got here? This is a, a Sierra Leone um, tenth anniversary of the Bank of Sierra Leone. This is a silver proof crown. This. That's the obverse. Oh, that's the reverse. Uh, then I've got this uh, Alderney um, crown again. I'll swing it over. 18, it's 1987. This is silver proof as well. Then I got this uh, pound proof here. This is a silver proof. I've, I've been collecting these. I've got the full silver proof sets, but because they, they made them in these sets here. I've actually been buying these sets and I'm, I think uh, I've got about 25 of them. So 25 silver proof pounds. I only paid 20 quid for that. Again, I paid 20 quid for that. And I paid 20 quid for that. That's the, the amount of silver that's in these. These are an ounce, ounce silver. So I bought two, two ounces there. So, it's about right. I paid about 40 quid, 40 quid for them too. And there's about that much silver in them. But then again, they come in these boxes. So they're worth a bit more. Um, so that's what we've been wasting this money on. More silver. But um, yeah, quite a few. And they do come in these bo lovely boxes. So as you see, some wonderful coins there. Um, probably the hardest ones to get hold of at the end of the apes. And I've got them all the way up to the groat. You know, you pay five, six hundred pounds for some of these, for them coins. And they've, they've chipped and nibbled to death. And, and they're not really good examples. But um, I thought I've, these two coins, them two M of the eights that I've got there, are absolutely awesome. I have uh, ordered some others. I've bought some others as well, some skits, uh, skeets. Um, they'll be coming in the post sometime in the next few days. So. Maybe next episode we'll show you them as well, but um, they don't have to be massive to be worth a fortune. They really don't, and they're so rare. And uh, these, 
these these ones what I've got here these are some of these are probably metal detecting finds you wouldn't have got them any other way really uh, there's a few other coins in there as well a few 50p's um, I might show you them as well I, I pay pennies for them really for these but the then we've got a few silver proofs here so you'll, you, you'll see you'll see them all anyway in the clip so there we go guys hope you enjoyed the video no buttercup the little traitor she's over there with Rick uh, well she was with Rick um, she was sprawled out on the on the on the bench over there so I don't know where she's gone she'll probably come back here with a mouse in her face in a minute and uh, drop it right in front of me that's a that's a normal trick that she does sometimes they're alive more or not they're dead oh oh you little bugger she's brought a bloody rat in oh and it's still alive i kill you where'd you got that one from look at it bloody rat she's brought in unbelievable well i don't think that's uh much gonna last a bit any any time soon look at that she's brought that in from where rick is little bugger well i think i better dispatch it what do you reckon guys Yep, she brings rats, she brings everything in. Unbelievable.